Harald Sigurdsson, given the epithet Hardrada in the sagas, was king of Norway from 1046 to 1066. In addition, he unsuccessfully claimed the Danish throne until 1064 and the English throne in 1066. Prior to becoming king, Harald had spent around 15 years in exile as a mercenary and military commander in Kivan Rus and in the Byzantine Empire. When he was 15 years old, in 1030, Harald fought in the Battle of Stiklestod together with his half brother Olaf Haraldsson. Olaf sought to reclaim the Norwegian throne, which he had lost to the Danish king Knud the Great two years prior. In the battle, Olaf and Harald were defeated by forces loyal to Knut, and Harald was forced in exile to Kivan Rus. He thereafter spent some time in the army of Grand Prince Yaroslav the Wise, eventually obtaining rank as a captain until he moved on to Constantinople with his companions around 1034. In Constantinople, he soon rose to become the commander of the Byzantine Varangian Guard, and saw action on the Mediterranean Sea, in Asia Minor, Sicily, possibly in the Holy Land, Bulgaria and in Constantinople itself, where he became involved in the imperial dynastic disputes. Harold amassed considerable wealth during his time in the Byzantine Empire which he shipped to Yaroslav in Kivan Rus for safekeeping. He finally left the Byzantines in 1042, and arrived back in Kivan Rus in order to prepare his campaign of reclaiming the Norwegian throne. Possibly to Harald's knowledge, in his absence the Norwegian throne had been restored from the Danes to Olaf's illegitimate son Magnus the Good. In 1046, Harald joined forces with Magnus's rival in Denmark, the pretender Sweyn Estridsson, and started raiding the Danish coast. Magnus, unwilling to fight his uncle, agreed to share the kingship with Harald, since Harald in turn would share his wealth with him. The co-rule ended abruptly the next year as Magnus died, and Harald thus became the sole ruler of Norway. Domestically, Harald crushed all local and regional opposition, and outlined the territorial unification of Norway under a national governance. Harald's reign was probably one of relative peace and stability, and he instituted a viable coin economy and foreign trade. Probably seeking to restore Knut's North Sea Empire, Harald also claimed the Danish throne, and spent nearly every year until 1064 raiding the Danish coast and fighting his former ally, Sweyn. Although the campaigns were successful, he was never able to conquer Denmark. Not long after renouncing his claim to Denmark, the former Earl of Northumbria, Tostig Godwinson, brother of the newly chosen English King Harold Godwinson, pledged his allegiance to Harold and invited him to claim the English throne. Harold went along and entered northern England in September 1066, raided the coast and defeated English regional forces in the Battle of Fulford near York. Although initially successful, Harold was defeated and killed in an attack by Harold Godwinson's forces in the Battle of Stamford Bridge. Modern historians have often considered Harold's death at Stamford Bridge, which brought an end to his invasion, as the end of the Viking Age. Harold is also commonly held to have been the last great Viking king, or even the last great Viking. Early life Harold was born in Ringerijk, Norway in 1015 to a star god Brandsdatter and her second husband Sigurd Sig. Sigurd was a petty king of Ringerijk, and among the strongest and wealthiest chieftains in the uplands. Through his mother Astar, Harald was the youngest of King Olaf Haraldsson's three half-brothers. In his youth, Harald displayed traits of a typical rebel with big ambitions, and admired Olaf as his role model. He thus differed from his two older brothers who were more similar to their father, down to earth and mostly concerned with maintaining the farm. The Icelandic sagas, in particular Snorri Sturluson in Heimskringla, claimed that Sigurd, like Olaf's father, was a great grandson of King Harald Fairhair in the male line. Most modern scholars believe that the ancestors attributed to Harald Hardrada's father, along with other parts of the Fairhair genealogy, are inventions reflecting the political and social expectations of the time of the authors rather than historical reality. Harald Hardrada's alleged descent from Harald Fairhair is not mentioned and played no part during Harald Hardrada's own time which seems odd considering that it would have provided significant legitimacy in connection with his claim to the Norwegian throne. Following a revolt in 1028, Harald's brother Olaf was forced into exile until he returned to Norway in early 1030. 
Upon hearing news of Olaf's planned return, Harald gathered 600 men from the uplands to meet Olaf and his men upon their arrival in the east of Norway. After a friendly welcome, Olaf went on to gather an army and eventually fight in the Battle of Stiklestad on July 29, 1030, in which Harald took part on his brother's side. The battle was part of an attempt to restore Olaf to the Norwegian throne, which had been captured by the Danish king Knud the Great. The battle resulted in defeat for the brothers at the hands of those Norwegians who were loyal to Knut, and Olaf was killed while Harald was badly wounded. Harald was nonetheless remarked to have shown considerable military talent during the battle. Exile in the east, to Kivan Ras, after the defeat at the Battle of Stiklestad, Harald managed to escape with the aid of Ra Paragraph Gnvald Bruges into a remote farm in eastern Norway. He stayed there for some time to heal his wounds and thereafter journeyed north over the mountains to Sweden. A year after the Battle of Stiklestad, Harald arrived in Kivan Rus. He likely spent at least part of his time in the town of Storia Ladaga, arriving there in the first half of 1031. Harald and his men were welcomed by Grand Prince Yaroslav the Wise, whose wife Ingegerd was a distant relative of Harald. Badly in need of military leaders. Yaroslav recognized a military potential in Harald and made him a captain of his forces. Harald's brother Olaf Haraldsson had previously been in exile to Yaroslav following the revolt in 1028, and Morkin Skinner says that Yaroslav embraced Harald first and foremost because he was the brother of Olaf. Harald took part in Yaroslav's campaign against the Poles in 1031, and possibly also fought against other 1030s Kivan enemies and rivals such as the Chuds in Estonia, the Byzantines as well as the Peshnegs and other steppe nomad people. In Byzantine service, after a few years in Kivan Rus, Harald and his force of around 500 men moved on south to Constantinople, the capital of the Byzantine Empire, probably in 1033 or 1034, where they joined the Varangian Guard. Although the Fatu Jarbakubed K maintains that Harald at first sought to keep his royal identity a secret, most sources agree that Harald and his men's reputation was well known in the East at the time. While the Varangian Guard was primarily meant to function as the Emperor's bodyguard, Harald was found fighting on nearly every frontier of the Empire. He first saw action in campaigns against Arab pirates in the Mediterranean, and then in inland towns in Asia Minor that had supported the pirates. By this time, he had according to Snorri Sturluson become the leader over all the Varangians. By 1035 the Byzantines had pushed the Arabs out of Asia Minor, and Harald took part in campaigns that went as far east as the Euphrates, where according to his school de jar cubed a degree a cubed lf arana cubed or sson he participated in the capture of 80 Arab strongholds, a number which historians Sidvus Bla Paragraph and Dahl and Benedict Benedict see no particular reason to question. Although not holding independent command of an army as the sagas imply, it is not unlikely that Harald and the Varangians at times could have been sent off to capture a castle or town. During the first four years of the reign of Byzantine Emperor Michael IV, Harald probably also fought in campaigns against the Peshnegs. Thereafter, Harald is reported in the sagas to have gone to Jerusalem and fought in battles in the area. Although the sagas place this after his expedition to Sicily, historian Kelly Devlis has questioned that chronology. Whether his trip was of a military or peaceful nature would depend on whether it took place before or after the 1036 peace treaty between Michael IV and the Fatimid Caliph Matt al Mustansi Abdullah, although it is considered unlikely to have been made before. Modern historians have speculated that Harold may have been in a party sent to escort pilgrims to Jerusalem following the peace agreement, as it was also agreed that the Byzantines were allowed to repair the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Furthermore, this may in turn have presented Harald with opportunities to fight against bandits who preyed on Christian pilgrims. In 1038, Harald joined the Byzantines in their expedition to Sicily, in George Maniax's attempt to reconquer the island from the Saracens, who had established the Emirate of Sicily on the island. During the campaign, Harald fought alongside Norman mercenaries such as William Ironarm. According to Snorri Sturluson, Harald captured four towns on Sicily. In 1041, when the Byzantine expedition to Sicily was over, a Lombard Norman revolt erupted in southern Italy, and Harald led the Varangian Guard in multiple battles. 
Harold fought with the KT Pan of Italy, Michael da Caruano's with initial success, but the Normans, led by their former ally William Ironarm, defeated the Byzantines in the Battle of Olivento in March, and in the Battle of Montmaggior in May. After the defeat, Harold and the Varangian Guard were called back to Constantinople, following Maniac's imprisonment by the Emperor and the onset of other more pressing issues. Harold and the Varangians were thereafter sent to fight in Bulgaria, where they arrived in late 1041. There, he fought in the army of Michael IV in the 1041 campaign against the Bulgarian uprising led by Peter Delian, which later gained Harold the nickname the Bulgar Burner by his scald. Harold was not affected by Maniac's conflict with Michael IV, and received honours and respect upon his return to Constantinople. In a Greek book written in the 1070s, the Strategicon of Kikamenos, Aralts is said to have won the favour of the emperor. The book says that the Byzantine emperor first appointed him Manglabites, a soldier of the Imperial Guard, after the Sicilian campaign. Following the campaign against the Bulgarians, in which Harold again served with distinction, he received the rank while at Mosinopolis of Spadara Candidatos, identified by Divlis as a promotion to the possibly third highest Byzantine rank but by Mikhail Bibikov as a lesser rank than Protospidarios that was ordinarily awarded to foreign allies to the emperor. The Strategicon indicates that the ranks awarded to Harold were rather low, since Harold reportedly was not angry for just having been appointed to Manglabites or Spidara candidatos. According to his scald Jodor Varnason, Harold had participated in 18 greater battles during his Byzantine service. Harold's favour at the imperial court quickly declined after the death of Michael IV in December 1041, which was followed by conflicts between new Emperor Michael V and the powerful Empress Zoe. During the turmoil, Harold was arrested and imprisoned, but the sources disagree on the grounds. The sagas state that Harold was arrested for defrauding the emperor of his treasure, as well as for requesting marriage with an apparently fictional niece or granddaughter of Zoe, called Maria. William of Malmesbury states that Harold was arrested for defiling a noble woman, while according to Saxo Grammaticus he was imprisoned for murder. Divlis suggests that the new emperor may have feared Harold because of his loyalty to the previous emperor. The sources also disagree on how Harold got out of prison, but he may have been helped by someone outside to escape in the midst of the revolt that had begun against the new emperor. While some of the Varangians helped guard the emperor, Harold became the leader of the Varangians who supported the revolt. The emperor was in the end dragged out of his sanctuary, blinded and exiled to a monastery, and the sagas claim that it was Harold himself who blinded Michael V back to Kivan Rus. Harold became extremely rich during his time in the east, and secured the wealth collected in Constantinople by shipments to Kivan Rus for safekeeping. The sagas note that aside from the significant spoils of battle he had retained, he had participated three times in Polutasvav, a term which implies either the pillaging of the palace exchequer on the death of the emperor, or perhaps the disbursement of funds to the Varangians by the new emperor in order to ensure their loyalty. It is likely that the money Harold made while serving in Constantinople allowed him to fund his claim for the crown of Norway. If he participated in Polutasvav three times, these occasions must have been the deaths of Romano III, Michael IV, and Michael V in which Harold would have opportunities, beyond his legitimate revenues, to carry off immense wealth. After Zoe had been restored to the throne in June 1042 together with Constantine IX, Harold requested to be allowed to return to Norway. Although Zoe refused to allow this, Harold managed to escape into the Bosphorus with two ships and some loyal followers. Although the second ship was destroyed by the Byzantine cross-strait iron chains, Harold's ship sailed safely into the Black Sea after successfully maneuvering over the barrier. Despite this, Kikamenos lords the loyalty and love Harold had for the empire, which he reportedly maintained even after he returned to Norway and became king. Following his escape from Constantinople, Harold arrived back in Kivan Rus later in 1042. During his second stay there, he married Elizabeth daughter of Yuzlav the Wise and granddaughter of the Swedish king Olaf Skar Paragraft Kunung. Shortly after Harold's arrival in Kiev, Yuzlav attacked Constantinople, and it is considered likely that Harold provided him with valuable information about the state of the empire. It is possible that the marriage with Elisiv had been agreed to already during Harold's first time in Rus, 
or that they at least had been acquainted. During his service in the Byzantine Empire, Harold composed a love poem which included the verse Yet the goddess in Russia slash will not accept my gold rings, although Morkin Skinner claims that Harold had to remind Yuzlav of the promised marriage when he returned to Kiev. According to the same source, Harold had spoken with Yuzlav during his first time in Rus, requesting to marry Ulysses, only to be rejected because he was not yet wealthy enough. It is in any case significant that Harold was allowed to marry the daughter of Yuzlav, since his other children were married to figures such as Henry of France, Andrew I of Hungary and the daughter of Constantine IX. King of Norway, returned to Scandinavia, seeking to regain for himself the kingdom lost by his half-brother Olaf Haraldsson, Harold began his journey westwards in early 1045, departing from Novgorod to Storia Ladoga where he obtained a ship. His journey went through Lake Ladoga, down the Neva River, and then into the Gulf of Finland and the Baltic Sea. He arrived in Sigtuna in Sweden, probably at the end of 1045 or in early 1046. When he arrived in Sweden, according to the scald Jodolf Arneson, his ship was unbalanced by its heavy load of gold. In Harald's absence, the throne of Norway had been restored to Magnus the Good, an illegitimate son of Olaf. Harald may actually have known this, and it could have been the reason why Harald wanted to return to Norway in the first place. Since Knud the Great Sons had chosen to abandon Norway and instead fight over England, and his sons and successors Harald Harefoot and Hartaknut had died young, Magnus's position as king had been secured. No domestic threats or insurrections are recorded to have occurred during his eleven-year reign. After the death of Hartaknut, which had left the Danish throne vacant, Magnus had in addition been selected to be the King of Denmark, and managed to defeat the Danish royal pretender Sweyn Estridsson. Having heard of Sweyn's defeat by Magnus, Harald met up with his fellow exile in Sweden, as well as with the Swedish king and nun Jacob, and the three joined forces against Magnus. Their first military exploit consisted of raiding the Danish coast, in an effort to impress the natives by demonstrating that Magnus offered them no protection, and thus leading them to submit to Harald and Sweyn. Learning about their actions, Magnus knew that their next target would be Norway. Harald may have planned to be taken as king of his father's petty kingdom, and thereafter claim the rest of the country. In any case the people were unwilling to turn against Magnus, and upon hearing news of Harald's schemes, Magnus went home to Norway with his entire army. Instead of going to war, Magnus's advisers recommended the young king not fight his uncle, and a compromise was reached in 1046 in which Harald would rule Norway jointly with Magnus. Notably, Harald also had to agree to share half of his wealth with Magnus, who at the time was effectively bankrupt and badly in need of funds. During their short co-rule, Harald and Magnus had separate courts and kept to themselves, and their only recorded meetings nearly ended in physical clashes. In 1047, Magnus and Harald went to Denmark with their Lydang forces. Later that year England, less than a year into their co-rule, Magnus died without an heir. Before his death, he had decided that Sweyn was to inherit Denmark and Harald to inherit Norway. Upon hearing the news of Magnus's death, Harald quickly gathered the local leaders in Norway and declared himself King of Norway as well as of Denmark. Although Magnus had appointed Sweyn his successor as King of Denmark, Harald immediately announced his plans to gather an army and oust his former ally from the country. In response, the army and the chieftains, headed by Einarth from Baskelfer, opposed any plans of invading Denmark. Although Harald himself objected to bringing the body of Magnus back to Norway, the Norwegian army prepared to transport his body to Nidaros, where they buried him next to St. Olaf in late 1047. Einar, an opponent of Harald, claimed that to follow Magnus dead was better than to follow any other king alive. Invasions of Denmark Harald also wanted to re-establish Magnus's rule over Denmark, and in the long term probably sought to restore Knud the Great's North Sea Empire in its entirety. While his first proposal to invade Denmark fell through, the next year Harald embarked on what would turn into constant warfare against Sweyn, from 1048 almost yearly until 1064. Similar to his campaigns against Magnus's rule in Denmark, most of his campaigns against Sweyn consisted of swift and violent raids on the Danish coasts. 
in 1048 he plundered Jutland, and in 1049 he pillaged and burned Hedby, at the time the most important Danish trade centre, and one of the best protected and most populous towns in Scandinavia. Hedby as a civil town never recovered from Harald's destruction, and was left completely desolate when what remained was looted by Slavic tribes in 1066. One of two conventional battles was said to be fought between the two kings later the same year, but according to Saxo Grammaticus, Sweyn's smaller army was so frightened when approached by the Norwegians that they chose to jump in the water trying to escape. Most drowned. Although Harald was victorious in most of the engagements, he was never successful in occupying Denmark. The second, more significant battle, a naval encounter, was the Battle of Nizayen on August 9, 1062. As Harald had not been able to conquer Denmark despite his raids, he wanted to win a decisive victory over Sweyn. He eventually set out from Norway with a great army and a fleet of around 300 ships. Sweyn had also prepared for the battle, which had been pre-assigned a time and place. Sweyn did not appear at the agreed time, and Harald thus sent home his non-professional soldiers which had made up half of his forces. When the dismissed ships were out of reach, Swin's fleet finally appeared, possibly also with 300 ships. The battle resulted in great bloodshed as Harald defeated the Danes, but many ships and men managed to escape, including Swin. During the battle, Harald actively used his bow as an archer, like most others in the early phase of the battle. Fatigue and the huge cost of the indecisive battles eventually led Harald to seek peace with Sweyn, and in 1064 the two kings agreed on an unconditional peace agreement. By the agreement, they retained their respective kingdoms with the former boundaries, and there would be no payments of reparations. In the subsequent winter of 1065, Harald travelled through his realm and accused the farmers of withholding taxes from him. In response, he acted with brutality and had people maimed and killed as a warning to those who disobeyed him. Harold maintained control of his nation through the use of his herd, a private standing army maintained by Norwegian lords. Harold's contribution to the strengthening of Norway's monarchy was the enforcement of a policy that only the king could retain a herd, thus centralizing power away from local warlords. Domestic opposition, according to historian Nut Hell. Harald completed the first phase of what he has termed the national territorial unification of Norway. Having forced his way to the kingship, Harald would have to convince the aristocracy that he was the right person to rule Norway alone. To establish domestic alliances, he married Tora Torberg's daughter of one of the most powerful Norwegian families. The primary opposition to Harald's rule would be the descendants of Håkon Sigurdsson, from the powerful dynasty of Earls of Lade who had controlled northern Norway and Trondelag with much autonomy under the Norwegian king. Håkon had even ruled the whole of Norway from 975 until 995, when he was killed during the takeover by Olaf Tryggvason. Even after Håkon's death his offspring held a certain degree of sovereignty in the north, and by Harald's early reign the family was headed by Einarth from Baskelfer, who was married to Håkon's daughter. While the family had maintained good relations with Magnus, Harald's absolutism and consolidation of the kingship soon led to conflict with Einar. It was from his power struggle with the Norwegian aristocracy that Harald got himself the reputation which gave him the nickname Hardrada, or the Hard Ruler. Although the relationship between Harald and Einar was poor from the start, confrontation did not occur before Harald went north to his court in Nidaros. One time in Nidaros, Einar arrived at Harald's court, and in a display of power was accompanied by eight or nine longships and almost five hundred men, obviously seeking confrontation. Harald was not provoked by the incident. Although the sources differ on the circumstances, the next event nonetheless led to the murder of Einar by Harald's men, which threatened to throw Norway into a state of civil war. Although the remaining descendants of Håkon Sigurdsson considered rebellion against the king, Harald eventually managed to negotiate peace with them, and secured the family's submission for the remainder of his reign. By the death of Einar and his son around 1050, the Earls of Lade had outplayed their role as a base of opposition, and Trondelag was definitely subordinated to Harald's national kingdom. Before the Battle of Nizayen, Harald had been joined by Håkon Ivarsson, who distinguished himself in the battle and gained Harald's favor. 
reportedly even considering to give him the title of Earl, Hoakon was greatly upset when Harold later backed down from his promise. With a stronghold over the uplands, Hoakon was additionally given the earldom of Var currency RMLAND by the Swedish king Stenkiel. In early 1064, Hoakon entered the uplands and collected their taxes, the region thus effectively threatening to renounce their loyalty to Harold. The revolt of Hoakon and the farmers in the uplands may have been the main reason why Harold finally had been willing to enter a peace agreement with Sweyn Estridsson. After the agreement, Harold went to Oslo and sent tax collectors to the uplands, only to find that the farmers would withhold their taxes until Hoakon arrived. In response, Harold entered Sweden with an army and quickly defeated Hoakon. Still facing opposition from the farmers, Harold embarked on a campaign to crush the areas that had withheld their taxes. Due to the remote location of the region and the interior of the country, the uplands had never been an integrated part of the Norwegian king's realm. Using harsh measures, Harold burned down farms and small villages, and had people maimed and killed. Starting in Romerike, his campaign continued into Hedmark, Hadland and Ringerike. Since the regions contain several rich rural communities, Harold strengthened his economic position by confiscating farming estates. By the end of 1065 there was probably peace in Norway, as any opposition had either been killed, chased in exile or silenced. Policies, Harold's reign was marked by his background as a military commander, as he often solved disputes with harsh force. One of his schools even boasted about how Harold broke settlements he had made, in his battles in the Mediterranean. While the sagas largely focus on Harold's war with Sweyn and invasion of England, little is said about his domestic policies. Modern historians have taken this as a sign that despite his absolutism, his reign was one of peace and progress for Norway. Harold is considered to have instituted good economic policies, as he developed a Norwegian currency and a viable coin economy, which in turn allowed Norway to participate in international trade. He initiated trade with Kivan Rus and the Byzantine Empire through his connections, as well as with Scotland and Ireland. According to the later sagas, Harold founded Oslo, where he spent much time. Harold also continued to advance Christianity in Norway, and archaeological excavations show that churches were built and improved during his reign. He also imported bishops, priests and monks from abroad, especially from Kivan Rus and the Byzantine Empire. A slightly different form of Christianity was thus introduced in Norway from the rest of Northern Europe, although it should be noted that the Easter Euro-West Schism had not yet taken place. Since the clergy was not ordained in England or France, it nonetheless caused controversy when Harold was visited by papal legates. The protests by the legates led Harold to throw the Catholic clergy out of his court, and he reportedly stated to the legates that he did not know of any other archbishop or lord of Norway than the king himself. Norwegian historian Halvdan Cote has remarked that the words seemed as if spoken by a Byzantine despot. It is possible that Harold maintained contacts with Byzantine emperors after he became king, which could suggest a background for his church policies. Northern explorations once he had returned to Norway, Harold seems to have displayed an interest in exploring his own realm, as for instance the Morkin Skinner recounts Harold's trip into the uplands. Harold is also said to have explored the seas beyond his kingdom, as the contemporary Adam of Bremen reports of such naval expeditions conducted by Harold, Kelly Devlis has suggested that Harold may even have known of and sought out the legendary land called Vinland which Viking sailors had discovered only a short time before which Adam mentions earlier in the same passage to have been widely reported of in Denmark and Norway H. H. Lamb has on the other hand proposed that the land he reached may have been either Spitsbergen or Nevea Zemlia. Invasion of England, background and preparations, with the truce in the recognition that he would not conquer Denmark, Harold turned his attention to England. England had belonged to Hartaknut, the son of Knut the Great, until he died childless in 1042. Harold based his claim to the throne of England on an agreement made between Magnus and Hartaknut in 1038, which stated that if either died, the other would inherit the throne and lands of the deceased. When Hartaknut died, Magnus assumed the crown of Denmark and considered himself the lawful heir to Hartaknut. While Edward the Confessor had himself crowned English king in his absence, 
Magnus had planned to invade England in 1045, only to be forced to turn his fleet towards Denmark due to an uprising by Sweyn Estridsson. Although the threat was temporarily averted by Magnus's death in 1047, Edward's negotiations with his enemies throughout the 1050s gave Harold an impression that he was a possible heir to Edward. When Edward died in January 1066, he was to Harold's dismay succeeded by Harold Godwinson, a son of one of his advisers. Harold's son Magnus had previously been involved in Gruffydd ap Llywelyn's 1058 war against the English king with a Norwegian fleet, possibly indicating that Harold had tested the situation in England long before his 1066 invasion, only to find that he could not simultaneously be at war with Denmark and England. After Edward's death, Harold allied himself with Tostig Godwinson, Harold's brother, who had been deprived of the earldom of Northumbria by Edward in 1065. According to various sources, Tostig may have asked both or either of William of Normandy and Sweyn Estridsson to assist him in invading England before turning to Harold. According to the sagas, Tostig finally pledged his support for Harold, including that of the majority of the chieftains, at a meeting in Norway. Some historians doubt that this meeting took place, as William of Malmesbury claims that Tostig did not pledge his support for Harold until they met at the Humber. This would indicate that the invasion originally was Harold's plan alone, and that his joining of forces with Tostig was merely a later agreement when the two met for the first time in Scotland or Northumbria. Another proposal by historians is that a meeting did indeed take place in Norway, but instead with Kopsik, one of Tostig's early supporters and a fellow exile, as Tostig's mediator. If this is correct, it would both allow an agreement to have been made in Norway and the first personal meeting between Harold and Tostig to have taken place in Britain. Indeed, Morkin Skinner mentions that some men claimed that Tostig only had sent an emissary to Norway, while he still remained in France. The plans for the invasion were in any case completed by the start of September 1066, and had possibly begun already in March or April. While he brought with him Ilisiv, his daughters, and his son Olaf, he left behind Tora and made sure to have his oldest son Magnus hailed as king. Gathering his fleet at Solund in the Sogniad, Harold departed Norway in August, and landed first in Shetland and thereafter in Orkney. In both places he was joined by several important lords, chieftains, and soldiers, including the earls of Orkney, Paul and Elm Thorfinson. He next went to Dunfermline, where he met with Tostig's ally Malcolm III of Scotland who allocated him a couple thousand Scottish soldiers. According to most contemporary sources, Harold and Tostig met at Tynmouth on September 8, Harold with a total force of, at the most, around 10 a Euro 15,000 men on 240 a Euro 300 longships, and Tostig with a mere 12 ships with soldiers. Not mentioned in the sagas, but accounted for by John of Worcester. Tostig had departed from his exile in Flanders already in May or June. He had then raided villages along the southern coast of Britain from the Isle of Wight to Sandwich. As Harold Godwinson gathered a large army in response, Tostig sailed north to meet with Harold, while Harold Godwinson remained in the south in expectation of invasion by William of Normandy, who for a long time had openly claimed the English throne. Invasion and the Battle of Stamford Bridge, embarking from Tynmouth, Harold and Tostig probably landed at the River Tees, entered Cleveland, and started plundering the coast. The first resistance was met at Scarborough, where Harold's demand for surrender was opposed. In the end, Harold managed to burn down the town, which in turn caused other Northumbrian towns to surrender to him. After further raiding, Harold and Tostig sailed down the Humber, until they disembarked at Recall. News of the invasion soon reached the Earls Walker of Northumbria and Edwin of Mercia, and they fought against Harold's invading army at the Battle of Fulford on September 20, two miles south of York. The battle resulted in a decisive victory for Harold and Tostig, and they had York surrender to their forces on September 24. This would be the last time a Scandinavian army defeated English forces. The same day as York had surrendered to Harold and Tostig, Harold Godwinson had arrived with his army in Tidcaster, just seven miles from the anchored Norwegian fleet at Recall. From there, he probably scouted the Norwegian fleet, preparing a surprise attack. As Harold had left no forces in York, 
Harold Godwinson marched right through the town to Stamford Bridge. Early on September 25, Harold and Tostig departed their landing place at Recall with most of their forces, but left a third of their forces behind. They brought only light armor, as they expected to just meet the citizens of York, as they had agreed the day before, at Stamford Bridge to decide on who should manage the town under Harold. Once there Harold saw Godwinson's forces approaching, heavily armed and armored, and greatly outnumbering Harold's. Although the English forces were held up at the bridge for some time by a single Norwegian, allowing Harold and Tostig to regroup into a shield wall formation, Harold's army was in the end heavily beaten. Harold was struck in the throat by an arrow and killed early in the battle during a state of berserkergang, having worn no body armor and fought aggressively with both hands around his sword. When the battle was almost over, some reserve forces from recall led by Eysteinor finally appeared, but they were exhausted as they had run all the way. Eystein picked up Harold's fallen banner, the Land Waster, and initiated a final counter-attack. Although they for a moment appeared to almost breach the English line, Eystein was suddenly killed, which left the rest of the men to flee from the battlefield. Among those left at recall after the battle, who were allowed to return home peacefully by the English forces, was Harold's son Olaf. Although sources state that Harold's remaining army only filled 20 Euro 25 ships on the return to Norway, it is likely that this number only accounts for the Norwegian forces. Most of the forces from Scotland and Orkney probably remained at recall throughout the battle, and has not been counted in the traditional figure. Harold Godwinson's victory was short-lived, as only a few weeks later he was defeated by William the Conqueror at the Battle of Hastings. The fact that Harold had to make a forced march to fight Hardrada at Stamford Bridge and then move at utmost speed south to meet the Norman invasion, all in less than three weeks, is widely seen as a primary factor in William's victory at Hastings. Personal life Harold is described by Snorri Sturluson to have been physically larger than other men and stronger. He is said to have had light hair and beard, a long upper beard, and that one of his eyebrows was somewhat higher situated than the other. He also reportedly had big hands and feet, and could measure five L's in height. It is not known whether Snorri's description of Harold's physical appearance actually represents historical facts. The tall stature of Harold is also substantiated by a story which relates that before the Battle of Stamford Bridge, Harold Godwinson offered Tostig back the earldom of Northumbria, and Harold six feet of the ground of England, or perhaps more seeing that he is taller than most men, or six feet of English ground, or seven feet as he was taller than other men. Harold himself composed skaldic poetry. According to Lee M. Hollander, composing poetry was normal for Norwegian kings, but Harold was the only one who showed a decided talent. According to one poem, Harold had mastered a number of activities that were considered sports in the Viking Age, including in addition to poetry, brewing, horse riding, swimming, skiing shooting, rowing and playing the harp. The sagas state that Harold and his Varangians at least once took a break during the siege of a town to enjoy sports. With regards to religion, Harold had, according to Devres, a religious inclination towards Christianity, and was publicly close to the Christian church, although he was influenced by the Eastern Christian culture of Russia and the Byzantine Empire, having spent most of his life there. He was clearly interested in advancing Christianity in Norway, which can be seen by the continued building and improvement of churches throughout his reign. Despite this, Devres notes that Harold's personal morality appears not to have matched the Christian ideal, citing his marriage arrangements. Issue: Harold married Elisiv of Kiev around 1044-45, and they had an unknown number, possibly several children. According to Snorri Sturluson, they had two daughters, Ingegerd. Married first to the future Olaf I of Denmark, and after his death, to the future Philip of Sweden. Maria. Promised away for marriage to Nystein Orr, but reportedly died on Orkney the same day that Harold died at Stamford Bridge. According to the sagas, Harold married Tora Torbergstatter around 1048. Some modern historians have disputed this, since Harold in that case would be in a bigamous marriage as he was still married to Elisiv. It is nonetheless possible that such a marriage could take place in Norway in the 11th century, and although Harold had two wives, 
only Elisiv is noted to have held the title of queen. Harold and Tora had at least two children, Magnus II. Reigned as King of Norway from 1066 to 1069. Olaf III. Reigned as King of Norway from 1067 to 1093. Legacy, burial, a year after his death at Stamford Bridge, Harold's body was moved to Norway and buried at the Mary Church in Nidaros. About a hundred years after his burial, his body was reinterred at the Helgesitter Priory, which was demolished in the 17th century. On September 25, 2006, the 940th anniversary of Harold's death, the newspaper Aftenposten published an article on the poor state of Norway's ancient royal burial sites, including that of Harold, which is reportedly located underneath a road built across the monastery site. In a follow-up article on September 26, the municipality of Trondheim revealed they would be examining the possibility of exhuming the king and reinterring him in Nidaros Cathedral, currently the burial place of nine Norwegian kings, among them Magnus the Good and Magnus Haraldsson, Harald's predecessor and successor respectively. A month later it was reported that the proposal to exhume the king had been scrapped. Modern memorials Two monuments have been raised in honor of Harold in Oslo, the city which he is traditionally held to have founded. A bronze relief on granite by Lars Juden depicting Harold on horseback was raised on the eponymously named square Harald Hardra Yende Plus in 1905. In 1950, a large relief by Anne Grimdelin, also of Harold on horseback, was unveiled on the Western Four Section Aid of the Oslo City Hall. In fiction, Harold appears in a number of historical fiction books. He serves as the protagonist in two children's books by Henry Treese, The Last of the Vikings The Last Viking and Swords from the North The Northern Brothers. He also appears as the protagonist in the trilogy The Last Viking by Poole Anderson, and in Byzantium by Michael Ennis, which chronicles Harold's career in the Byzantine Empire. The alternative history book Crusader Gold by marine archaeologist David Gibbons features Harold as a key figure, as it follows him in acquiring the lost Menra among his treasures during his service in the Byzantine Varangian Guard. Harold also makes an appearance in Meadowland by Tom Holt. In film, Harold was portrayed by Richard Long in the first episode of the BBC series Historionics, titled 1066, which explores the background of the Battle of Hastings. Harold's unorthodox departure from Constantinople is featured in music by the Finnish folk metal band Chill Rises in the song The Great Escape. In addition, he is followed loosely throughout the story of the albums The Varangian Way and Stand Up and Fight. Footnotes References Bibliography, Bag, Sver. Harold Hardra Yendi I Byzants. To Fortlinger, To Cultura. In Anderson, Irvine and Har Currency GG. Thomas. Hellers Ognorge, Contact, Kumperorgen, Contraste en Artikels Amling. University of Bergen PPA 169 Euro 92. ISBN A82 991411 3 3A, Bieler, John. Warfare in Feudal Europe, 730 1200. Cornell University. ISBN A978 0. 8014-9120-7A, Bibikov, Mikhail. Byzantine Sources for the History of Balticum and Scandinavia. In Volt, Evo and Par Currency LL, Janica. Byzanto Nordica 2004. Tuchu, Estonia, Tuchu University. ISBN A9949-11-266-4A, Bla Paragraph Ndal, Sigfa S with Benedicts. Benedict S. The Varangians of Byzantium. Cambridge University. ISBN A 978-0-521-21745-3A, Gravit, Christopher. Nick, David. The Normans, Warrior Knights and Their Castles. Osprey. ISBN A 978-1-84603-218-9A, Devres. Kelly. The Norwegian Invasion of England in 1066. Boydell and Brewer Limited. ISBN A 978 0 85115 763 4 Jarda, Kim and Vike, Vegard. 
Viking OIKRIG. Spartacus. ISBN A 978 82 430 0475 7. A. Jacobson, Svra. The Schism That Never Was Old Norse Views on Byzantium and Russia. Byzantino Slavica. Slavanska One Half Estav Academy Vardo R. B. B. I and Euro Slavica PPA 173 Euro 88 A. Moseng, A Lake Yorg, A L Nosk History, 750 to 1537 I Oihug. ISBN A 978 82 518 3739 2 A. Shive, C. I Norges Minter I Mid Alderan. Christiania, H. Tar N S B E R G A, Scar, K O L B J A R N. Norges Mint History, Minter Ogut Muntning I 1000 E N R, Penchsler I 300 E N R. Numismatic I Nord 1. Universitets for Laget. ISBN A 82 00 22666 2. Stenton, FM Anglo Saxon England. Oxford History of England 2. Oxford, Clarendon Press, Oxford University Press. ISBN A 978 0 19 821716 9. Halva. Harold Hardra Yender. Sir Jack Ongeen. Saga Box Spartacus. ISBN A 978 7 A. External links. Primary sources with biography. Saga of Harold Hardrade by Snorri Stirluson. English translation. A grip. In Old Norse with English translation. An account of the ancient history of the Norwegian kings by Theodoric the Monk. English translation, Morkin Skinner, in Old Norse, Fake Skinner, in Old Norse, Flatu Jarbacubed K, in Icelandic, Devres, Kelly. Medieval Mercenaries, Methodology, Definitions and Problems. In France, John. Mercenaries and Paid Men, The Mercenary Identity in the Middle Ages, Proceedings of Conference Held at University of Wales, Swansea, 7th to 9th July 2005. Brill PA 58. ISBN A 978-90-04-16447-5. Fiver, Devres, Kelly. The Norwegian Invasion of England in 1066. Boydell and Brewer Limited PPA 11 a Euro 13. ISBN A 978-0-85115-763-4A.